again everybody welcome back to my channel so this week is something a little bit different a lot of you guys have been requesting an updated houseplant tour to see kind of what my collection looks like where everything is at there have been a lot of changes since my last one so I thought I'd take you around it will probably end up being a two-parter just because I have so many plants so probably most of the rest of my house and then my plant room as kind of two separate days um, and I thought I'd show you everything in the state that it's in right now so a lot of these plants are a little bit more dormant or not putting on new growth because it's winter time some of them are in a little bit rough condition just because I haven't been taking the correct care of them over the last few weeks so I thought I'd take you around show you everything I do want to do a major rehaul of kind of where some of these plants are maybe put in some new shelving so there might need to be another updated plant tour maybe over the summertime as kind of as I rearrange everything but you guys don't want to listen to me talk. You guys want to see all my plants. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. All right, so I'm starting you guys out in my bedroom, um, which has one west facing window. It is a pretty sunny day today, so hopefully the lighting is good for this. So here we have my Stromanthe Trio Star. This one had been going through a little spell of not doing so well. You can see some of the leaves here are pretty crispy, pretty, pretty dry. Um, but a lot of this new growth that's coming in actually is doing a whole lot better. So I have some high hopes for this one. Hopefully you can see new leaf coming in there. So as we move into the growing season, I think this one, I think I've finally kind of settled on the watering that it needs, how often it needs to be fed. And I think it's, it's doing okay in this lighting here as well. And just below that one on my bookshelf is my Hoya Curtsii. So this one is doing pretty well on the shelf. It has been putting out quite a bit of new growth. There are a couple of yellowing leaves. It looks like it's just kind of one strand or one plant. Hopefully you can see that back here, just this little section kind of back here. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that before I go moving it because it's giving me kind of these mixed messages. Is it maybe I just skipped a watering or overwatered it, or maybe it will stop putting out that new growth and start going down a little bit and I need to move it to a place with more light. I'm still kind of playing with that one. And then on my bedside, you can see that I have one of my Begonia Maculata YDIs. This one is actually in semi-hydroponics. So this is one that I'm playing with semi-hydro. It was one that took a little time to adjust, but now that it's adjusting, it's putting on a couple new leaves here. You can see it's putting out a little new growth there. So I'm gonna see how this one does in the semi-hydro. I'm not worried about if I need to convert it back. And yes, if you're questioning, I am reading Harry Potter en français at this moment <laughs> I'm not I'm not fluent in French by any means but if, if you were wondering yes it is Harry Potter in French and then over here getting some pretty decent light actually from my west facing window is my Calathea warswishii I love this plant so much I love the big velvety leaves and it is putting on a little bit of new growth as you can see there's a couple newer leaves coming in again one that I kind of maybe have struggled with the watering of especially if I'm not staying on top of it but it seems like it's doing okay this is actually my second one the one that I had previously in this spot is currently in my plant room. I'll point that out when I get to it. It was really, really not doing well. So I wanted to try to rehab it a little bit. This one seems to be doing slightly better. Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Maybe I really hope I can get the care down for this particular Calathea because I love it. I love its big leaves. I love the velvety texture. If you ever get the chance to feel one, oh my gosh, they're so wonderful. I'm just, <laughs> it's it hasn't been the happiest plant in my home. All right, over in this corner, I have my um, bird of paradise. This is the white bird of paradise. This one I had outdoors for a little bit in the summer, and I might actually move it back out there this uh, summer once the weather warms up a little bit. You can see there's a new leaf coming in here, or that did come in that was probably dealing with the lack of nutrients. Um, and it really hasn't been putting on a lot of new growth. It doesn't get the best light in the world here, especially for a plant this size. Um, but I really do love it, and I'm hoping if I can move it back outdoors this summer, put on a little extra growth, trim off some of that bad growth, and maybe I can kind of make it work in my home if I can uh, bring it back and forth between indoors and outdoors as the weather permits. And then up above that, I have my Hoya SP Affinity Bertonii 
which is looking a little bit sad. Again, one that maybe I haven't been the best at staying on top of watering. I hate, um, I love the look of hanging plants, but I hate taking them down and watering them. So maybe sometimes if I'm in a hurry, this one gets a little bit neglected. You can see a couple of dying leaves in here. I've had to take out a couple strands. Um, and it may not be getting enough light in this position. I love, love, love the way it looks in this corner where it's hanging. It just might not be the plant for in this particular spot. So again, I'm going to keep an eye on it. If you guys want me to do a video about like the decisions that I make when I choose to move a plant, when, what signs I'm looking for to see if it's struggling, I'd be happy to do that. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this one again, maybe move it to a more sunny location, maybe repot it as spring kind of comes around. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that one. So in this particular hallway, I get some okay light. So it gets a little bit of light from my living room and then the door to my bedroom is kind of right there. So it gets a little bit of light and I do have a couple propagations here, more for show than anything else. I have a couple of Cebu Blues, I've got my Marble Queen, I've got a Neon Pothos in here. And if I can find her Instagram, I got this from a local gal, I'll tag her Instagram down below. I think it's so cute just hanging on the wall there. So I have a couple propagations on the wall just to take up some space. And then over in this corner, I have my Hoya Obovada. I was a little worried about it um, doing okay in this particular space. I wasn't sure if it was gonna get enough light, but it actually has done really pretty well other than a couple of little leaves starting to not look quite so happy. It actually has done pretty okay here and put out a couple of new leaves. Again, one I'll keep an eye on just because I know it may not be ideal conditions, but one that I definitely think is doing better than I expected when I put it into this space. Right above that, I have my lipstick plant. This is my rescue. This is Tiny Tim. Um, he's doing really, really well. This particular strand, I was trying to do a chop and prop and stick it back into the LECA. I had one strand that was getting really long. I don't know that that's gonna survive. I don't know for whatever reason, I really struggle with propagating um, the lipstick plants. They just don't like to propagate for me. But you can see I've got two really healthy strands here and actually chopping it you can see that chopping it actually has caused it to put out a little new growth there. So I'm hoping Tiny Tim will continue to do well. He has done fantastically in the LECA. Once, I, once it kind of adjusted, he has just been super happy in this space. So I think I'm gonna keep him here for a little while longer. And then up here at the top, I have my Anthurium clarinervum. This one, it's surviving in this light. It's a wonderful plant because even though it's a little more of the, one of those rare plants, it will actually survive with a lot of conditions that you throw at it. Um, so it's not putting on any new growth. It is winter time. Um, towards the end of the summer, I moved it to a little sunnier spot for two or three weeks and it did pop out this biggest leaf that you see up here. So I may do that again as the days get a little bit sunnier. Go ahead and pop it back in a sunnier spot. Maybe see if I can inspire a couple more leaves, but it's doing perfectly fine here in this corner, getting kind of a medium to low light. It's not struggling. It's doing perfectly fine. Here in this little corner of my kitchen, I have my red Maranta. It is so happy in this spot. I don't know if I'll ever move it from this particular spot because it just puts out so much new growth. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five. There's at least five new leaves popping out right now. And that's pretty normal for this plant in this particular spot. It gets a tiny, tiny bit of really modeled indirect sunlight towards the very end of the evening, especially when the days get a little bit longer. But other than that, it's getting medium indirect light. It gets watered when it dries out and it is just happy as a clam sitting here. So this one, highly, highly recommend if you like something in the Maranta or Calathea family. This one has been just hugely easy care for me. I've taken several uh, propagations from it to share with friends and family and it is doing just incredibly here in this space. All right, so here kind of next to my TV, again, getting some bright indirect, maybe a tiny bit of direct light through the day. I actually have my Hoya Micrantha, which I converted over to semi-hydro. This one was propagating in water. So it was a very easy conversion to just stick it in the LECA. It's doing pretty well there. And you can see a little bit of new growth coming out this way. I think it will be really, really happy in this position. And then I have my Begonia Rex. 
I struggle, you guys, with begonia rexes. I don't struggle with my cane begonias. I don't struggle with a lot of things, but I struggle with these begonia rexes. I don't know if I just can't get their watering down or what. This one has been reasonably happy for me. Um, I think it's got a little thicker leaves than some of the other ones, but I've killed most of the rest of my begonia rexes. So I, I just, I'm gonna avoid them when I go to um, the nursery. If you have any care tips for begonia rex and why I might be struggling with them, leave those down in the comments below. I don't know what it is. I just, I think they're so pretty. I just, for whatever reason, cannot keep them alive and happy in my house. All right. And then here's my west facing window that goes out towards my patio, which is kind of a mess right now. And you can see I have my Alocasia Ivory Coast. This thing is a beast and I actually did just repot it because he was struggling a little bit for me. Um, I felt like it was starting to really crowd the pot that it was in and I felt like it was a healthy enough plant that I know it's winter time um, but I felt like he really needed to just be repotted a little bit bigger. I don't know that I'll go bigger pot than this after um, this repotting. I might just do divisions. So you can see he's in quite a huge pot putting on just giant leaves and I'm hoping for even more huge, huge leaves if I can get them up to a nice big size. I love the stems on this particular one. Let's see if I can get a good shot. All right, so the stems have kind of this modeling or this variegation on them. Beautiful, beautiful plant one that I got before I was even into house plants and did really, really well. Um, I know it's getting some direct sunlight. It just, it's lived in this spot forever and he's happy and he's putting on growth, so I'm not gonna mess with him. And right here, which will probably move, brand new purchase for me, a ponytail palm. They got these in at Walmart and I walked by them two or three times. Ponytail palm had been on my list, but I wasn't sure was it the time to get one. I didn't know where I was gonna put it. I couldn't resist. Look at these cute curly little leaves and this big old thick stem. I thought it was so cute. So I have to find a spot. Um, I don't know that he looks the best with my decor in this particular spot, but I think it's super cool. It's a super cool plant, and I'm very excited to have this new one in my collection. And if we head over here, right next to that patio window, I have my Hoya numeroloides. This one, again, is one that I moved into this spot. It has just taken off. It is doing so well, and so it's probably not going to move. It's bloomed twice for me since I put it in this spot. There was one big bloom earlier this fall, and then it put on a couple of blooms Oh, I don't know, probably about a month ago, maybe like middle of December, something like that. Um, so I don't know where those came from, but he is just happy as a clam in this spot. I think I'm gonna try to rotate him a little bit and get some growth going this side so I can even it out, maybe do some prop and chops. But this one is just so happy for me. Again, getting some direct sunlight coming from that patio window towards the evening. But I also have some trees and things out there. So it's never like full direct sun like you would get in a south facing window. I think he's pretty happy here. And then up here in this corner right next to one of my south facing windows. There we go. It's the Hoya Bella. This one is doing really well. She's got a couple blooms happening, which I, it pretty much has been in bloom since I've brought it home. You can see maybe there's a few strands that look like they're a little bit withered. I struggled with the watering a little bit over my busy season, but this one I feel like actually took a little bit of abuse. So even though there's a few spots that maybe look not quite so happy, I think it's gonna be fine. You can see tons and tons of new growth. And what I've noticed is if it's unhappy with its watering, if it's unhappy with this watering, it will blow out those blooms and they will just drop right away. So if it's blooming, I know it's got the right amount of water, at least for me in my house. All right, so kind of here in the middle of my living room, working over towards my dining room and my kitchen, I have one of my newer plants, my Monstera adansonii. I love this plant. This is the one that I picked up when I did my Denver house plant tour. I'll make sure I link to that one. This one is so cool, puts on so much new growth, and I have taken so many cuttings of it since it came home. It's been a really popular one um, in my area, so I've taken a few cuttings to give to friends or to sell to some people, some local plant people. So it's doing really, really happy. You can see it's starting to grow towards the light. I might eventually make another moss pole and stick it in here and kind of rotate it just a little bit, but I think it's happy there. I have my dumb cane, which 
It just survives whatever I can throw at it in my house. So I'm just going to I'm going to hold on to him. He's just a survivor. I did actually go ahead and convert this one over to the semi hydroponics as well. Struggled a little bit in the beginning and you can st see still kind of if I don't get the watering just right kind of gets a little bit wilty. But this one has been perfect for this spot. The lighting's weird. It's growing, it's surviving, so it can live there and add a little green to my shelf. And then up here, up above, I have one of my Hoya Carnosas. You can see putting on just a ton of new growth. This one had lots of big, long tendrils, so I've seen some questions of people asking if tendrils will put on leaves. So this one grew a big, long tendril, just like this one up here, and then eventually put a couple leaves on it. So it's doing fine. It can live there. It can stay there. This one, you guys. Okay, I converted this Pearls and Jade Pothos over to Semi Hydroponics. This is probably one of the first plants that I converted over. Um, I thought, you know, it's easily replaceable. It's something that I've got some cuttings of. So may as well, let's see how this goes. This thing has become a monster plant since I converted it over to semi-hydro. It has just grown and grown. It's gotten bushier up here. It's put on this long tendril that probably needs to be cut soon. It just thrives. It loves the semi-hydro. So this is an example of one, almost no recovery time. Pretty much the second it hit that semi-hydro, it went bonkers and I'm so happy, I'm so pleased. It is just doing fantastically. All right, and here on my dining room table, I do have one of my orchids. This is one of the Oncidium style orchids that has the big bulbs. And hopefully I can get you in and you can see. So this one is in LECA. And it wasn't doing so hot. A lot of the ones that you get from the grocery store, I'm going to flip you guys around so that I can get the light from actually behind me instead of behind the camera. All right, so that's better. So you can see Oncidium style orchid. It's got those big bulbs. And when you buy orchids in the store, very often um, those roots are rotted off, they're struggling. And you can see even here, you've got a couple leaves that aren't doing so hot. So this one wasn't doing so well. I decided to take a chance and convert it to semi-hydro. Finally, finally, if you can see in there, it's starting to put some roots out. And I do have one more that actually had this really wrinkled bulb that's actually put on roots and starting to do better. So I have hopes this one will recover. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep you guys updated. All right, up here we have my shelf of Hoyas. So this gets plenty of south facing sun. You can see they're in a bright sunny location, getting really not a lot of direct uh, sunlight, maybe a little tiny bit towards the very end of the evening. I have my Hoya Lacunosa just growing like a weed. This one just lives thrives, probably will need to be repotted this spring. My Hoya Carnosa that I have inside my hydroponics doing really well and you can see it gets really, really splashy. So that's where if you guys want me to do that experimentation on if the semi-hydro actually increases the amount of that kind of splash or variegation, or maybe this one just had that splash already um, and it wasn't presented in the leaves that I already had. I can do that experiment. I think that's so super cool. I've seen that increase since I've converted it over to semi-hydro. I have my Hoya Chelsea doing pretty well. My Hoya Hindu Rope. And then my Puba Calyx. This one is my Royal Hawaiian and you can see he's got, he's starting to take over all this space. I probably will get a little circle hoop, a little trellis and put him on that pretty quick here. I just need to find one that I really like. Alrighty, we are here in my kitchen. Now, everything that is up on my counters, with the exception of the Neon Pothos, is going to be in semi-hydroponics and doing pretty well. I have, I hope you can see, I hope you can see my Marble Queen Pothos up there. I have my Skindapsis. This one actually has done pretty well. I did lose one big strand um, that didn't take the conversion, but the rest of it is actually put on some new leaves and things. So I know it doesn't look big and bushy and full, but it was coming from like two or three big leaves. Hopefully y'all can see that up there. My Cebu Blue Pothos. This one didn't take the conversion super well, but it's starting to perk up. It's starting to do a little better. Same thing over here with my Philodendron Brazil. There were a few little casualties there, but overall doing pretty well in the semi-hydro up top here. 
All right, and then hopefully you can see my big old neon pothos that's up here. I bought this one nice and big and full. It's done fantastically up here. Takes whatever I throw at it. So if you want one that you might be able to miss the watering or whatever, this one's a trooper. Just keeps growing, keeps putting on all these new leaves. So it looks beautiful. It's a nice pop of color up here on top of my cabinets. And then way up here, I have my philodendron micans. This one also got converted to semi-hydro. And hopefully you can see, putting on some new leaves. There we go, there's some good shots. Lots of new little baby leaves coming in there. And that's another one that's done pretty well converting over to the semi-hydroponics. Here in this little kind of dark corner, I have my ZZ plant. Gosh, I love ZZ plants so much. You can see there's a couple yellowing leaves. These are some kind of older leaves, some back here as well. I may have also gotten a little weird with the watering, not remembering when I'd watered it. I think I'm on the right track now. I hope I'm on the right track now. Again, another one I'm gonna keep an eye on. If it gets any worse than this, I will consider making some changes to my care. But it's been pretty happy. The ZZ plants just love to chill. They got no problems, right? Um, so one that I love having in my home and perfect for this little like dark corner where I want some greenery, but I don't want anything that's gonna be a hassle or a struggle. All right, so here is my guest bathroom. This one is a little bit on the dark side. I would categorize it as pretty dark. There is one little tiny window that lets in some light. My master bathroom has zero windows, no light, nothing. I do have a snake plant in here. I'll probably move it out pretty quick here um, and give it a few days in the sun. It's not doing great, it's not doing horribly, it's just surviving. Up here, I did have a spider plant. I moved the spider plant, it wasn't doing so well. I have one of my propagations of my marble queen pothos. That seems to be doing up fine up here in this corner. It's getting pretty decent light up there actually. Um, so I'm gonna maybe repot that into something that's a little more aesthetically pleasing but for the most part doing okay up here. And then down here by my sink, I have one of my little pearls and jade pothos, again, a little propagation. Getting decent light, putting on some new growth. So, you know, just a cute little plant to have here next to my guest sink.